History and reviews. Thank you for the super chat. Dr. Price and Derek, Jesus didn't do any miracles until he was baptized and got the Holy Ghost. Is this proof he was not God? Uh, I think that it is. Uh, uh, it fits most naturally with adoptionism. That, uh, as uh, it says in one of Peter's speeches in Acts, he was anointed with the Spirit and went around uh, doing good and freeing those held captive by Satan uh, and and so forth. Uh, I think uh, that 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 is assuming adoptionism. Uh, the the real question there is is that the author's own Christology, or is he just trying to give it temporal color? To, he knows that this was an early view of the church and doesn't mind risking the confusion by having it put that way. Uh, I don't know, but I think it uh, it is compatible with that. Uh, of course, and, and I think to contrast that, you can see what happens when people did believe Jesus was a God on earth, like Krishna, uh, born as such, uh, because they wrote all these infancy gospels, uh, where, uh, as, as um, uh, my old professor Gordon Fee used to say, the gospel of the divine brat, uh, that uh, Jesus goes around killing kids and uh, striking his teachers dead and stuff like this. It's comical, though I don't know if... Uh, if the ancients thought so, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, that kind of story is an answer to the question. Wait a minute! If Jesus was born God, uh, why didn't he do uh, these miracles until he was dunked? What what would have been the point of waiting? Well, maybe he didn't. And so you have the infancy gospel of Thomas, the infancy gospel of Matthew, the infancy, the Arabic infancy gospel, and probably more besides that. And a couple of these snuck into the New Testament. Um, and uh, you can tell, like the, um, the one where Jesus is 12 years old and he's in uh, the temple. And uh, he's granted he's not doing miracles, but he's shown as a child prodigy. Uh, and uh, his, it's so, uh, again, comical. It makes, um, it shows Jesus having to bear with the stupidity uh, you know of, of adults what fool these mortals be uh, because uh, mary and joseph are, are in the caravan home for three days anybody you seen the kid i i mean again, that's just impossible right there and so they say, oh my gosh i bet he never left jerusalem let's go back and they they're searching all over for him in the the comic book stores and the video arcades and <laughs> all this stuff and what the heck well last place i remember seeing him was in the temple might as well take a look there and there's jesus in halakhic debates with the rabbis and all that <laughs> and so like, what are you doing here and jesus says where else would I be? Don't you know I have to be about my father's business, which isn't Joseph, apparently. I mean, he'd be in the carpenter shop, maybe, if it was that father. I mean, so there's the the uh, the, the infancy gospel stuff. And as Raymond Brown pointed out, the, the uh, Cana wedding is another one. Uh, the adults are stupid. They've uh, they didn't bring in enough wine for the wedding reception guests. And uh, Mary hears about this, and she wants Jesus to bail them out. It's like she's Martha Kent, and Jesus is young Clark Kent, and and she knows he has divine powers. Says, "You think you could help him out here?" Uh, and he says woman my time is not yet you know this this is an abuse of my powers and uh but okay okay and here's what you have to do i mean it's obvious this doesn't fit in with mark or anything like that uh and it's obvious also that that everybody takes for granted that jesus is superman a uh, strange visitor from an alien planet. And uh, and so th these snuck in, but you see what's <laughs> happened. They've now become adventures of the adult Jesus or another one, the fig tree, uh, where Jesus is saying, boy, I sure could use some figs now. Uh, uh, hey, there's a fig tree over there. Son of a bitch, you're never going to have any figs again. Zap! 
uh, wait a minute. What what is this? And then Mark, uh, who includes it, says, oh, of course, he said that just to make it a lesson of uh, faith. Yeah, that's it. He says, yeah, if you have faith in your heart and don't doubt that it's going to happen, you can even do stuff like this and it'll work. Come. On. Come on. It's like, again, Jesus the menace, Jesus the divine brat, uh, but it's been smuggled into the ministry period. Uh, and um, so there's there that's, again, a kind of an interchange. People that wanted to uh, preserve some of this crazy uh, divine brat tradition, but uh, but didn't really believe it anymore. They, they believed that uh, or, or still didn't believe it, I should say. Uh, they were sticking by the earlier view that Jesus only did these miraculous feats once he was baptized by John. But this story is too good to leave out, so let's interpolate it in here. When I was younger, I used to like those passages. If you have enough faith, the faith of a, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou cast into the sea. I used to really sit there and like try to squeeze and like try to get it. So I could make things move or do something like be mm, like no kinesis. I'm not kidding. I really used to do mm. that and think maybe I would have enough faith. Maybe I can move it and that will prove I have power because I have faith. And then I'd always go, dude, you, you just don't have enough faith. 